Hi. Perfect. Apologies. My name is Matt, and uh, it's very good to see you today. Thank you for being punctual. It's always appreciated. Now, we have a lot to get through today. Hot towel shave is something that should never, ever be rushed, and it's something that we take great pride and care incorporating every detail every little nuance of the face everything's taken into consideration and um, as you saw as you walked in um, our most executive and exclusive clients are treated to their own straight razor now, traditionally uh, hot towel shaves are conducted with a pop razor so it would look similar and then instead of having a straight razor you would have a detachable and replaceable blade for sanitary purposes however because you are the only client that will be using this razor it's a true straight razor and therefore one of the finest blades you could ever find in our barbering community. Now, please do take a seat. You may have noticed I only have one gloved hand. The gloved hand uh, is for maybe reapplying some of the beard shampoo or some of the elixirs and the creams that we'll be using today. And me being left-handed, uh, I like a free hand for the scissor work that we'll be arriving upon later. Okay, now, we do have a lot to get covered today. I'll walk you through what we have in store. And something tells me you are going to really enjoy yourself today. Now, as I said, we pride ourselves in our skill, in tailoring our experience to our customer the contours of the face to the small imperfections we might have where the hair grows where our follicles sit all right so you are in very safe hands and rest assured i love my job now first thing we'll be doing all right is some razor work and by razor i mean electric razor we will be using a Remington MB250. It's extraordinarily sharp for an electric razor. And what this allows us to do is just thin out any existing beard that you might have. Uh, tidy up the lines a little bit. Just make it more manageable. Then we'll treat the beard. We like to get the, the noise, the uncomfortable sounds out of the way. So the razor's up first. Then we treat the beard a variety of elixirs and creams a little bit of oil there as well a little bit of beard oil and then we apply the hot towel okay then the shaving foam then we razor and then if we have time we'll maybe tidy up top a little bit and uh, i also have a, a new elixir in as well for thickening the hair if you're suffering from hair loss at all, which almost every one of us does at some point in our life, this uh, tonic especially will help thicken things up a little bit. All right? Please do get comfortable. You'll be well taken care of. And sit back and relax. I will introduce you to our Remington MB. 250. It's the absolute pinnacle of convenience. Very long battery life. Unparalleled power being sent to the blades. Sometimes you can buy a cheaper electric razor and find that pain when you're shaving. Not so with the Remington MB250. Individual razor points. Very sharp. First, we'll thin, running through 
as so. Okay? It's a little bit loud, but do bear with me. It doesn't last too long. That looks much, much better. Okay, now all I've done here is thinned it out a little bit. How close did you want to go down? Are we talking just above stubble level, two or three? Okay, the electric only takes us down to a five. Again, it's uh, just tidy up, thins out a little bit. And then anything specific, I'll go in with the scissors and shape the beard appropriately after we erase her in those defined lines and that's part of what to me stands out in a hot towel shave not only is it an enjoyable experience but those defined lines on the beard you feel great when you're walking down the street you feel sophisticated professional even and that's achieved at, at great ease. But the more skillful the barber, the more elegant the look. Needless to say, we are the kings of articulation and the queen of elegance. Okay, now, Thin it out a little bit. I want to add some treatment. Make sure we've got a healthy, shiny gloss. I think I'll start with. Uh, no, I don't want you. I need. I need you. Now this is a pre-shave treatment oil. I'll be adding just a little bit. palm of the gloved hand and this is used sparingly because we don't want too much oil prior to the shave right into the moustache we don't want too much oil it inhibits the razor a little bit so we're using sparingly and we're getting right in into that beard. There we go. We're massaging the oil down into the right tip of the follicle. Making sure it's being absorbed. Good. Very good. Good. Okay. Now that is an exotic spice flavor. And 
in all honesty, if you ask me what exotic spices are made up of, I couldn't give you the exact list. Uh, there's a variety of uh, scents and flavors that's just almost assaulting the senses in the most perfect way. But uh, it's definitely a very, very mild paprika, but of cardamom, it's beautiful. But regardless of the amazing scent, the actual usefulness of the product, that's why we use it. So Eve already, your beard is absorbing it and it's glistening. It's not saturated in oil, it's just been lightly coated. Even the skin beneath, that upper epidermis really absorbing and not goodness. All right, good, nice. Okay, from here, what I'd like to do is apply a warm towel. Now this is, uh, it's hot, but it's not uncomfortably so. We'll test on my forearm to make sure the temperature is applicable and appropriate. It's then applied to the face, and then we double down on the mustache and the chin, okay? The neck especially, it contains the most capillaries and the most veins. So when we're cutting, we wanna make sure that beard and the skin is soft and as malleable as possible. I mean, not only do we never cut our customers, but we don't even have a history of any irritation on our skin. We take time to study our client, study the lay of the hair, whether we want to go with or against the grain. Some people's skin just simply doesn't allow to go with the grain, okay? Or rather, go against the grain. Now, relax. We will get you towel up like this. It's quite warm. Again, we're testing on the. It's nice. beard, we're doubling down on the moustache, and tucking under the chin, good, good, now we're going to leave that for a couple of minutes, and what it's going to do, as I said, is just open up those pores, and the hair is just going to pop out the follicle, and we pull back on the skin giving us access to a much, much closer shave and therefore an overall feel of uh, absolute silk. <laughs> okay, now, while the towel's doing its work, I would just like to uh, tidy up the eyebrows a little bit. So for the first time, we'll be reaching for our stainless steel razor back scissors. Beautiful set of shears. And so we're just, just tidying up here. Just a little, uh, just a, <laughs> a few, uh, rogue hairs the eyebrows. Now we're, we're, not, um, we're not plucking, we're not uh, pruning over extensively on the, the eyebrows. I think um, sometimes we, we can go too far um, in any gender with our eyebrows. I think they should be bold, but without being like two giant caterpillars on our forehead. But equally that wispiness that sometimes comes with age. Good, okay. Okay. Just applying a little bit of pressure. Let the towel do its, uh, its best work.
Alright. Just uh, peel this away. Alright. Now, the skin is heated. Our pores have opened. Pores don't technically open, but uh, it's something close to that. And I think we are ready to get lathering. In our lathering bowl, you'll notice a few tiny droplets. That's rose water, and it's not there by coincidence. It's not the result of just washing the cup. Rose water actually bonds very well with our chosen shaving cream. And it also uh, treats the follicles nicely. Some liquids, even water, can be quite abrasive sometimes. Our water is distilled uh, in cured form. Now our choice of cream might surprise you. We are using Nivea Cool. Now, Nivea is by no means the most expensive product uh, that we use or on the market. However, we are a believer in results. We don't hold prejudice on price points or brands. Not that there's anything wrong with the Nivea brand, uh, but this works especially well for a few reasons. One, it's a chamomile-based soap, which is unusual for a shaving foam, and therefore the smell is instantaneous and very, very refreshing. All right? But more importantly than that, Zero alcohol. Alcohol has a habit of drying out the skin and making us look older than we really are. Okay? More importantly than even those two prior points, this is a ribboned foam. And you'll see what I mean when we load it up. We hold this vertically. And we're only using this quite sparingly because it goes a long way. And when I say ribboned, I mean it literally quite honestly comes out ribboned. That might not seem like a big deal, but even the way the foam is ejected from the can can have an impact on how well it froths and it foams. About your hairbrush, nothing more to say on that. You can hear the leather. Thick foam. Meringue style peak. Absolutely perfect. That is exactly how a lather should look. Stiff peaks. Creamy. Now, the next technique I owe to a gentleman called the Sultan of Silver. Many barbers will still apply the foam with the brush, and there isn't anything wrong with that. It's just not the most optimal way of applying. So we're going to get a nice big scoop here. So, and instead of poking it onto the skin, we extract the leather from the brush. And here, with just two fingers, we're applying into the beard. 
And you can almost imagine it as like a, a paint palette. We use it where it's required. So we're getting a nice, even cover. smell. That's chamomile. Good. Stick to the neck. Wonderful. And I said that hot water from the towel is just uh, making the perfect canvas for our foam and that if I do say so myself is the perfect lather okay now in one quick move Glove is removed. And we are ready to shave. I have a little pot of shampooed water here. Just in case we come across any dry spots. Close your eyes. I don't need you to purse your lips or brace your jaw. I'll do all the work for you. I just need you to relax. Can you do that for me? Good. Now, let's go to work. As expected, the blade cuts through the hair effortlessly. And all we're doing is just pinching back the skin with two fingers. The hair follicle is just popping up and we're slicing along. At the moment I'm going with the grain, your skin does look quite sensitive and I've I'm assuming you realize this, but your hair on this side of your face grows horizontally. Your hair on this side of your face is growing vertically, which is traditionally and generally the usual way hair grows. But no problem. We've seen it. We've reacted to it. Very good. Very good. Okay. I'm just going to go into the neck and we're really going to create, I said, those defined lines.
do you have close shaves quite regularly or have you grown the beard out? Is that, is that quite a new thing for you? Okay. The skin beneath the beard, because if you've been bearded for quite a while, um, it can be a little bit paler, obviously, because your face is generally seeing sun. Mine isn't because I never leave my house. But generally speaking, um, if you were to shave a beard off entirely, you would see it's going to be a bit more pale. But yours is uh, either it's tanning through the beard or it's a fairly new beard. Maybe you could even have sworn you didn't have a beard until you walked into our store. <laughs> Alright, lines are looking very well defined. Just need a little bit more. Just a little bit on the neckline there. I don't mind applying additional with the brush. Wonderful. Stepping to your side. And of course the barber never wants to take too long in the creamed phase because you don't want the skin drying out. But of course, you should never rush either. It's all about a balance and understanding what that balance should look like. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Very good. That's looking much nicer. Much nicer. Okay, just a little bit more of the moustache, I think. Just very, very, very slight. Nice. That is looking. Um, what I've done is I've just taken a little bit more from the underside of the chin. So what it does is it allows a chiseled look. Not that your chin isn't chiseled, but uh, it really kind of scopes out the jawline and accentuates the boldness of the chin. So uh, your face is actually very well proportioned, <laughs> strange as that might be to hear, but uh, good, really good. All right, good. Okay, now we have a few more things we need to take care of. But first, I would like to sort out what's going on up here. I think we can do more for you <laughs> than what you're currently supporting. All right, don't mean to be rude. Uh, we all have our limitations. And, uh, that's why you seek out professional Right. I think next we'll uh, chop up the hair a little bit. Reach for the razors. And then I need just a little bit. Just to dampen the hair very slightly. We don't want to. ginger extract in our water yes you have a very good nose as well as a very good beard all I'm doing here is just uh, cutting into I guess you had like a messy fringe cutting into that a little bit well, um,
fringe. and messy. Ostentatious, we're just bringing it to that sculpted look in line with the beard. There's no point in having an immaculate beard, very well maintained and groomed, if you're going to walk around with a less than stellar haircut. No disrespect to your prior hairdresser, of course. <laughs> no shade. Good. Alright. I think um, I mentioned earlier there's um, an elixir we use to thicken our hair. It's made by a company called Natural Tech, not sponsored. And uh, we just find it here. It's a dropper. Yes, you. Now this elixir is uh, used expressly for thickening weakened points of the hair. So if you had a receding hairline or your hair on top's perhaps thinning out a little bit, I advise you just to use a couple of drops every day of this. I'm going to apply it via dropper directly to the scalp. It has a beautiful menthol scent to it. Almost overwhelming, actually. I'm just going to drop this onto your scalp. Good. And we use it quite liberally. It is quite expensive. It's uh, viscosity. It's, uh, it's quite thick. I'm just going to put it to each point on the head here. Good. I'm just going to massage that in with my thumb. Massage. Really running my fingers through the scalp. Actually using more of the pads of the hand. Really massaging away. Really having that elixir penetrate deep into the root of the hair. It stimulates growth and fortifies the healthy head. Good. Very good. Natural tech. Thickening tonic for scalp and fragile thinning hair. It's, uh, it's not fair to say it's a miracle worker, but it's a, a very, very well balanced and well made product that we use quite regularly at the salon. Okay. Now I think all we need to do is just treat the beard with a nice uh, a lemon and lime beard oil. That's what we need. Lemon and lime beard oil. I feel like Ollivander trying to pick out the right wand. Uh, yes. Dashing beard elixir. Lemon and lime. That is green. Never mind. No, we shouldn't be too liberal with beard oil. Again, uh, oil is uh, just a couple of drops into the palm of the hand. And we apply in a similar fashion to the elixir to the beard, and you can smell that lemon and lime. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Wow. Well, that really, again, fills the senses with a refreshing and 
invigorating feeling. Wonderful. Good. Very good. Good. Nice. Now, there are occasions where I would apply a cold compress to the beard after shaving, however, your skin is clearly very resilient, there was no redness, no irritation, but now we've applied the oil, I'd like to apply a very light cold compress just to help close up the pores and lock in the goodness. Just a small quite cold, but not uh, too uncomfortable, I hope. Good. Good. These actually sit on blocks of ice, believe it or not. They don't absorb that much of the cold, but they're uh, reinforced blotting sheets. And they're just blotting away any excess oil. And closing up the pores with that kind of cold. things left to do. A balm for the beard. A beard balm is a little bit like a styling wax uh, for hair, but um, it's less greasy, it's thinner, because obviously we have less follicles on the beard. I want uh, you on the shoe. and sun. Beer bum. Absolutely beautiful product. Used quite sparingly. We're just all we're doing here is just almost uh, shaping the beard with the bomb. Again, accentuating the crease, accentuating the jaw. Those little rogue hairs we have sticking up are just smoothing out. We don't really want to cut them any further, but as short as you want to go. And cutting out one hair is just uh, bad form. Blend it in. Blending in the moustache. Good. Very nice. Very, very nice. This will come as a surprise, but the beard balm is largely unscented. There's a little bit of argan oil in there for um, nutritional purposes. For your beard, I mean. But. Uh, it's not largely scented. Uh, it's meant to work in conjunction with the beard oil, and the beard oil can, it carries the scent, which in this case was our lemon and lime, with a, an exotic spice foundation from the original pre-shave oil that we used. Good. 
and the beard's looking sleek, looking like a a well-oiled, you know, Roman god that stepped to the battlefield. I like it, and we just need the hair to match the beard. And for that, I will never use one product. Anyone that says use different, just get up and leave. Matte paste. Very malleable wax. Holds well. It's tacky, but it's not sticky completely. Hair loves it. Spreads with the fingers very, very easily. Warms up. And we're just gonna going with two fingers and we're going to mess it up. There we go. Good. A little bit to the fringe. It's messy, but it's not the, the same messy that you came in the store with. It's more uh, constructed mess, shall we call it. We've just accentuated the parting a very little, little bit. A little flick on the fringe. And messy, but styled. Styled chaos, let's call it that. Going right around the back here. It's looking good. We just have one final thing to do. And this is more of a personal preference. Not every barber does this. This is a beer brush. And all this is going to do is we have styled with the beard balm. It's just make sure everything is evenly spread and it gives the hair, especially on the chin, the most perfect finish. Good. I mean, if I do say so myself, I think we've done pretty well here. The hair looks sophisticated. The beard looks chivalrous. Commanding. statement, but we want to, to announce, not shout, the statement. Confident conviction, minus the arrogance. That's, that's what we've created today. I think, I would recommend you do is perhaps come back and see us just to get the beard trimmed every week the hair every four okay every two weeks if uh, I would suggest every week we could style it trim it to find the lines and it'll be good for five or six days come and see us on the seventh 
It is my absolute pleasure. And believe me when I say, I'm so glad you came in today and I hope you found our experience both informative and relaxing and uh, finally. Life changing. Okay, the last one is a stretch, but uh, please do come and see us again. I know it's been a while since your last trip to the barber and I apologize for that. It won't be such a long wait next time. Okay? Take care. Look after yourself.